Welcome to Gallifrey Pirate Radio. Um, I am one of your hosts, Davey Beauchamp. I am very, very tired this week because me and Clayton, or Clayton and I just helped a friend of ours, Jair, move. So we're pretty exhausted and we're kind of like, zombies. Um, but to the right of me... Six. Six. Hi. Yeah. To the left of me... I'm really hungover. Yeah. And that too. <sighs> and today we're discussing... Episode 4 of Torchwood Miracle Day. Um, let's jump right on in. What did we like about this episode? Wow, I've never Wait. heard you guys pause like that before. Well, it, I don't know, I really liked that uh, they're moving the Danes thing along. <laughs> that he's, wow, they made it they? much clearer exactly what role he's supposed to be serving in the series. Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, what about you, uh, Lacey? I don't know. Like, nothing particularly popped out that I really, really liked. Not like in other episodes where I was like, yeah, this is, like, phenomenal. I mean, it was... It was... It didn't flow as nicely as I, I wanted it to. So, you know, I don't know. I didn't have any favorites this week. Wow, because I'm, I'm like totally the opposite. I love this episode because it was different than the others. It was more action-packed, Wait. more fast-paced. Um, I love the assassin and, he, you know, and how he took the new viewpoint of the new world. Like, his, his business has been destroyed because yeah, he can't kill really anybody. Cool, yeah, yeah. The, the day the killing stopped. I mean, I mean, that's a really unique perspective. I mean, we sort of got that when they were talking about the wars and things like that. But yeah, I like the the assassins are kind of a little disheartened because they're out of business. I thought that Asian dude was really hot. Nice. And, you know, the whole Gwyn talking in a I guess an American like accent <laughs> was really humorous. Yeah. That was cool. Um... It was kind of cool to see how she, you know, was interacting with her husband more this episode and then how it ended, you know, where she's like, no, get him to, no, he don't let my dad go there. Yeah. Even though I told you to get him out, I lied. Okay. So what do you like about this episode? Because it seems like, the, like previous episodes, you guys have really, really loved certain aspects of the show. Um, what did you like about this episode? Because it seems like there might be more of that this week than in other weeks. Everyone was dumber. Like, Esther, I mean, I know she's so sweet, and she really wants to see her sister, but damn, does she really not think about the whole, you know, there's some problems. Yeah, she, she, has, she has gone through training on subjects like this. I don't know. She should know better. Would she have? Because she's not a field agent. Yeah, but, but she'd know but, about it. Yeah, there's, there's still certain protocol you'd have to follow. And then uh, Rex just sort of is an angrier version of himself. <laughs> he he came off I don't know, almost like a parody of the way the character had been written before. Mm -hmm. uh, Gwen doesn't seem like she should have been snuck up on as easily as she was by yeah. the assassin who was even, you know, taking his time to be all theatrical about what he was doing. Uh... And it also struck me as really bizarre the way that uh, Kitzinger really hates Danes, and it wasn't mentioned or even suggested until this episode. Yeah, that's true. It, it, it almost felt like there was an entire episode worth of development between those two that was just completely <coughs> skipped over. I could see that. Yeah, I have to agree. It's, I mean, I really thought it was really stupid when Jack tossed his gun without securing the area. Yeah. I, that really surprised me. Um, that wasn't really Jack-like to me. Um, I, I can sort of see that because it's Gwen. I think Gwen's is sort of one weakness. Right. Um, but still, the security guy downstairs, Gwen upstairs, I, I had a hard time taking that leap that Jack wouldn't secure the area first. Because it's not like Gwen was going to die. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have, I have to agree with you in that. Um... Yeah, because really, this episode, I there isn't much I didn't like. Um, I because I, like I said, I really like this episode. Um, let me go down. Let me go through some of my notes. I 
I, I jotted down here that just popped up in my head as I was watching this. Okay, in the opening sequence with Esther and her sister, do you think those kids that we were hearing, were they in the sister's head, or could Esther hear them as well, you think? Uh, she couldn't <laughs> hear the kids, but, I mean, they were there. Yeah, I mean, I know the kids were there, but those voices we heard, I mean, because the way, because it seems like if your aunt's visiting you, yeah. most nieces and nephews want to see them. I don't think they knew that she was there. It's well, no, because he said, like... Mommy, make her go away. The yeah, other sibling. Those the, yeah, those were the kids arguing. Yeah, but I think... No, making her go away, she was talking about her sibling. You don't know, no, it's a boy and a girl. No, it's and two it was, girls. I thought it was a boy and a girl. No, it was two, two girls. girls. Okay, that was my bad. Yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, it seemed like they added those... It seemed to me that they added those voices in in post-production... Yeah just to try and make the scene come across as less creepy. Because without, without those voices, it it really seems like the kids are dead. See, honestly, the way I took that scene initially was that the kids were in the sister's head, and until we actually heard that the kids were alive, I thought they were dead already. Yeah, that's why I think that... Yeah. I, it, it does seem to me that they added voices in in post-production. Yeah just to prevent that from being the assumption you'd have. Yeah. But, I mean, I I, I, th I think that would have been a, a great dark scene showing the, the darker side of all this. Um, they mentioned that Jack had been on the West Coast 70 years ago, and do you think that 70 years ago might play an important part, especially because the assassin said he had given them something a long time ago? Do you think 70 years is actually a long time ago uh, to Jack, or do you think it has to be older than that? Further back, I think the back. 70 years ago thing was just a World War II reference. Okay. Um, what do you think about Dead is Dead? That phrase. Actually, not the way that I thought it was going to be played up, given the preview from last week. How did you I, think it was I originally up? thought that Dead is Dead referred to the concept of dead being something that no longer existed. Yeah. See, I took it as dead as, you know, like, if you're dead, if you're supposed to die, you were dead. And you can kind of see that, you know, this, the triangle group, their plan is to be in turn in every, everybody. Yeah. Um, and how the, the, the congresswoman or whoever she was, Lady in Pink, was jumping the gun on their plan mm -hmm. and how they didn't like it. Um, the, I mean, I kind of took dead as, dead as dead as, you know, those that have died or should have died, are dead to, to everybody else. And i got to say, I did love the Gwen and Reese conversation about L.A., you know. Yeah. That was a, just a really cute, funny scene, I thought. Mm -hmm. um, okay, okay, will Gwen's father, Esther's sister, or, or her children, or Rex's dad, end up being used, used as pawns against them in Torchwood? Most certainly, yes. Yeah. I, I can see Gwen's father at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he is now in one of the, the camps. The children are now in the system and can be adopted by anybody. Yeah. I mean, in foster care. But Rex's dad, I just don't know. There's something weird going on there. I don't yeah. think he's going to come back. I don't you, you think, think so either. You think it's done? Yeah, I think it was just to show how alone Rex was, that he had to actually have that moment before the audience would really get it. Yeah. Which, I, th I mean, I thought it was really interesting that he actually shed a tear over that scene. Yeah. I mean, that was... Because that, that totally broke down who Rex has been in the entire series. Yeah. You know, like this badass, badass, badass. Asshole. Yeah. yeah but, egotistical. But, you know, parents are the people who are best at destroying you. Yeah. Um, Jillian, only six months at FICOR. Do you think this... I mean, she seems really high up in, in sort of... The food chain there, and could this be a clue? Uh, actually changes my perception of the character. I don't think that she's as involved as she thinks she is. I'm really getting the idea now that she's she's just middle management, doesn't really know what it is that she's doing or what their greater goal is. She's just doing a job that's been given to her. And one more thing about Jillian, she's always in red. Yeah. I mean, she is always in red. I mean, I'm wondering if she's... I, I, I understand the symbolism, you know, red, the devil, evil. Yeah. It's... 
But, I mean, she's consist consistently in that color, which is really interesting. Uh -huh. I'm curious to see how that is actually going to play out as a thematic element to the story. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, who do you think the Masters of Five Core are? Which we also know that whoever... Which is... I mean, most likely the, the Triangle Group, as I like to call them. I don't think they're the same organization. You think they're two different groups? Or I, I Core, is tied into the Triangle Group. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But the assassins seem to be operating outside the standard chain of command. Yeah, the, the, I think he, I think he was hired by. I think the Triangle Group, the Mister Group, which I actually have a theory about who they are, which I'll get to later. Okay. Um, you have the Triangle Group, and then you have all these subsidiaries, yeah. basically. And basically, the Triangle Group either directly hired the assassin or through one of their... Which I think he had to be directly because he knew way too much. Yeah. And I definitely think FICOR is a a property of the Triangle Group. Um, and I think there's a key to the name, FICOR. I, have, I actually am going to have to look up the Phi part to see what that translates to mathematically or in Latin or in theology. Because mm -hmm. I think that Phi actually means something. Okay. I'm not 100% sure what, but I have a feeling... So, let's talk about Danes. Yeah. I mean, this was a huge episode for Danes' development as a character oh, and his role in, in the show. Yeah. Um, Dane seems Dane seemed really smart in this episode. He did. I mean, smarter than in any of the previous episodes so far. Yeah, he was the only character who was allowed to be intelligent yeah. this week. I mean, with the whole, you know, you know, doing the internet thing, trying to find out about who Ficor was, and I liked how he... You know, related it to his experiences trying to hide himself on the internet and who he was really the the killer. Um, so I was wondering, do you think he's going to end up joining Jack and Torchwood to help save the day? No. Because I mean, he seemed not to maybe like the fact that his quote unquote new masters were hiding themselves so well. I, what interests him more than anything else is being on the winning team. Yeah. Um. And Dames, it, he seems also seems like he's teetering on sanity and insanity again. Do you think he has the potential of snapping and killing again? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Do I you, got a little nervous when he picked that baby up. I mean, do you think he? Do you think he is going to kill by the end of the by the end of the show again? I wouldn't be surprised. Saying. Um, uh, one thing that I did really like was that scene with him in the hotel room. With the... Yeah, because it, it's just this really simple, petty form of evil just going around, taking advantage of the fact that he was in a comped hotel room and racking up as big a bill as he could. I love that. Well, I mean, <laughs> I would totally rack up the biggest fucking bill, oops, yeah. sorry, if it, the room was being comped. Yeah, that's... It's just... I, I love that he was just... Opening up bottles of uh, seltzer just because he could. And <laughs> I found it really interesting that he started playing like this almost patriotic uh, music while he's giving his big monologue in the house in the in the death we hospital. Are the same. I almost want to say it's an Independence Day joke. <laughs> oh, that good call. <laughs> I could totally see that. But no, it just started getting really patriotic, like he's running yeah. for president. But I mean, in a sense, he was trying to sell himself. To the people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even though, you know, people recognized him. Yeah. And I gotta say, I think the highlight for me this week is the assassin. I really like the assassin. Um, I like what he did to Nicholas in order to get the information. Um, I have to wonder how badly he mutilated Nicholas, and if Nicholas is going to end up coming back. Maybe not this season, but later on to seek revenge on Torchwood. Because, I mean, the dude's smart. He seems connected. But, I mean... But I, I do want to say, I think the assassin was totally, totally underutilized. And I would have liked to see him go longer in the, sh in the show. He might still, but I I kind of thought that he was another character who just came across as dumb for a lot of the episode. He's supposed to be all scary and violent and creepy when, you know, he's with Nicholas in the car and everything. But he just comes across as dumb, that despite having the orc, the, uh... He has all of these resources of this world-spanning organization. He could just make a phone call and say, Hey, I need this Nicholas guy to open up this thing for me. 
And instead he goes, okay, I'm gonna kill someone. Well, not kill someone, just horribly mutilate him. Just because I can. It, it's, it doesn't fit with the story at all. They're, they've essentially got the same employer. You know something? You're right about that. I really hadn't thought about it on that level, but you're right. I mean, he could have made a phone call. But what really bugged me about that scene was, you know, when Gwen's saying, you shot him in the throat, you shot him in his throat, he can't tell us, who, he can't give us the information now. Um, his hands are perfectly good. Why couldn't he write the answer down? Because, again, people aren't, weren't allowed to be smart. I know, but like I said, that, it didn't hit me the <laughs> first time. Yeah, I mean, it didn't hit me the first time I watched it. Yeah. I was just like, damn, but while I was watching it the second time, I'm like, um, unless he, Rex is that awesome of a shot and he severed the spinal cord as he shot the throat, dude could still write. I mean, because honestly, if this Captain Jack was the bastard character he was in the first season of Torchwood, he would have drugged that body back to wherever, and he would have tortured the dude until he gave him the name by writing it down or something. Jack would have found a way to extract that information. Yeah. Um, do you think next episode, because we didn't get to see a preview, that's the reason I ran it through the credits, do you think the next episode might be them trying to rescue Gwen's dad? I don't know. Because honestly, all the, all we really have right now, come this episode, because we're pretty much at the midpoint, we're at the halfway mm -hmm. point, because this is ten episodes, we're in episode four. I mean, all we really know, besides, I'm going to spot my three off in a few minutes, is they need to go get Gwen's dad. Yeah. They have to decipher the, the stuff on the on the servers. I mean, they know about the internment camps, basically, now. Um, and they have the mystery of what Jack gave who. Mm -hmm. And trying to solve that mystery. But there's, like, no reason for them to stay where they're at right now. So, I'm, I mean, I'm really curious. I mean, I really have a feeling that they might end up back in Wales again, trying to rescue the dad. I don't know. I don't, I don't know where they're going to go from right here. Well, yeah, I, they're going to stick to the U.S. Yeah. Just because that's that's what that was sort of one of the premises of this season. Yeah, but one of the monocles also for the season was it was Torchwood International, and I mean we've had one episode in the U.K. and now three in the U.S. Um, so I don't know. I mean, maybe they'll go investigate the camp. Well, the thing, well, they, they can invest at the camp in Wales, but also they did say that this organization that, that's behind all this is worldwide. It's international. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how much more they can milk out of the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm really curious about where we're going next episode. I did like how Jack made a point of, you know, when Rex was like, why are we watching these two people on the news? You know, and Jack's like, just keep watching yeah, so I'm, I'm, that, we've sort of gone over all, all my questions about the episode. We are going to do a quick fire game because I had a lot of fun with that. Okay. Even if you guys didn't, I'm sorry. I had a lot of fun doing that with you guys. Um, but I do have a little bit of Torchwood news before I get into my theory about who's behind Miracle Day. Um, it appears Stars had no plan on doing a, another season. They still don't? As of two days ago. Okay. As of Friday, they had no plans on doing a second, a second, a second season. Um... Though the ratings are phenomenal, they're not discounting another season, but part of it also depends on Davies and the BBC. So we really have no clue. This could be it. Huh. It may not be. We do know that Jack will have potential on Doctor Who again, because uh, Moffat's already said he wants to bring Jack in for at least an episode. I don't know if it's going to happen anywhere in season six now at this point. Um... Because he didn't want him for a good man goes to war. But, I mean, this might be it for Torchwood. I would hate that. Um, because, I mean, I think the show has just gotten better and better. With each season. With, with each season. Each season. So, yeah. yeah, that's my one. And we'll keep you up to date on what we find out and what we hear, what they release um, with that. But now it's Davy's theory time. Um, the people, I think, that are behind this, and you could, you could sound into this, I think they're the Knights Templar. The what? The Knights Templar. Huh. Um, and one of the reasons why I think it might be the Knights Templar is because I have been watching... Oh. Yeah, go get, go get your phone. I am so sorry. Yeah. 
That's why you put phones on vibrate. I thought I had. Um, but I think it's a nice Templar because one thing you could do is if you take the triangle and put it on its point, it gives you the universal symbol for the the Grail, which is the triangle cup, the a woman's uterus, which has also been known to be the 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 cup that holds life. Right. Um, it also refers to life, birth, um, the miracle of life. I mean, whoever drinks upon the growl will heal the land, will live forever. Um, so I'm wondering if the th item that Jack gave somebody, maybe he was the one that gave the Templars the grail because one of the biggest mysteries behind the Templars is what did they have to become one of the most powerful organizations of all time? What was the secret they found? And one of the, the things that has always been, they had the grail or they knew of its location. So, I mean, who's not to say that Jack wasn't the guy who gave the Templars the Grail? And, so some, and somehow the Grail ties into it, because other things that have been tied into it, or, you know, other things that have supposedly give eternal life, the Fountain of Youth, yeah. and Ponce de Leon, and that in Florida, which in itself has been tied to some really outlandish Grail legends. Um... And with Ponce de Leon possibly being a Knight Templar, which I, I highly doubt. I mean, but it's just something really thematic that you can uh, use in a story like this. That's really interesting. Yeah, because I've been watching the web episodes, and the web episodes themselves, which I'll, I'll show you guys eventually, are iffy because you can't get a real sense of when they're supposed to take place. Because in one of the episodes, they basically say Miracle Days already occurred, yet Jack gets shot and he heals. Huh. So they're a little iffy, but the best part about it is at the end of each episode, and after you play all the web games, you get this evidence of clues. Mm -hmm. And this week's episode, or web of clues, really wasn't all that interesting. It dealt with FICOR and pain and immortality and stuff like that. And the painkillers, you know, that, that whole thing about them knowing it was going to happen ahead of time. But the week before that, they really tied it into the Knights Templar, the Holy Grail, the... Um, Ponce de Leon and the um, and the Fountain of Youth and the and the week before that they tied it into JFK and a lot of those conspiracy things about an organization being mm -hmm. being behind all this stuff and the Knights Templar were one of the organizations that were just wiped off the map supposedly okay. but they really weren't they went into hiding for the most part because the last known time that the the actual flag was ever flown was about was in a battle in Scotland which um, and it was the last time it was ever seen and that was that was like. I forget how many years after the Templar destruction was, you know, these knights showed up on the on the battlefield to help help in this Scottish battle. I can't remember the full every detail about it, um, but I mean, it, I think it ties together in some form or fashion, which could make it really really interesting. Because I'm starting to think this is less alien, unless of course they they tie like the growl and stuff somehow into alien technology. But it seems like it has to go beyond technology at this point. To be able to undo what the heart of the TARDIS did to Jack. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty powerful mojo. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's not like Doctor Who has not touched on magic. I mean, it's touched on Altharian legend before, and the devil, and we know Davies loves his, you know, fanfic type writing. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I, I could see him touching on these elements... Because it's it's been touched on before in Doctor Who, right? So I mean, it could be more mystical than techni technology, or it could be a, a merger of the mystic and technology together as one to do what they did. But then the real then the real question is, what's the end goal? I mean, is it money really? Is it something more? Me, I mean, I just I can't figure out what the end game is. That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out. What's the end game? Because I think money is way too obvious. Yeah, it's not money. It's control. Yeah. It's power. But yeah, I just... But why Why the immortality route? I'm waiting for that, that, that clue. And what worries me, because this is Davies, he could, he could give us a hell of a beginning, a damn good middle, and then just drop the ball in the end. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed this season so much, I don't want him to drop that ball. Yeah. So. So, are you guys ready for the quick fire? Yes, sure. because I'm being picked up very soon. Oh, are you? It's now December. What? To see Piper. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, one of our, our uh, Lacey's really good friends is moving to Texas, so yeah. She's abandoning me. Yes. So our quick fire questions, and remember, answer, um, just throw your answers out there. Is Esther's sister batshit crazy or just mentally ill? Mentally ill. Mentally ill. Yeah. The assassin, uh, did they kill him too quick? He's not dead. Yeah, but you know, they take me, I, I meant like take him out of the picture. Uh, we don't know that for sure. Okay, creepy ass Andy or not? Uh, I love the I, well. Okay, what I mean by creepy ass Andy was the eyeball in yeah. the thing. I really love that ending. I mean, I liked it. I was hoping for more blood. Okay, is Jack really trying to gay everyone out? No. That's the plan. <laughs> exactly. Rex, is he an asshole or is he heartless? He's an asshole. He's he's going through a really rough patch, that's all. If he were heartless, he wouldn't have gone to see his father okay. and he wouldn't have cried. Is Rex feeling his mortality? Yes, yes. absolutely. Uh, Danes, would you want him speaking on your behalf or not? No. Yeah? I, I mean... I could speak for dude, myself. Dude knows how to work a crowd. <laughs> okay, and I bring this question up again. Will Rex betray, betray the team? No. No. Gwen's accent. Hysterical. Amazing. Uh, Jack and Gwen's fake couple routine. Funny. Yeah. A little bit. Remind me kind of like hippies a little bit. Yeah. Gwen's accent or the doctor's who's the man from, from season six opener, which is worse? Who's the man? Absolutely. I don't know. Okay. Oh, that was the season five opener. Five, season five. Sorry. Huh? Yeah. Dead is dead or, or life is life? Life is life. Sure. I don't know. Okay. I haven't thought about it that much. That is one hell of a document shredder. That is. That is one large document shredder. Yeah. Um. That just beat Sintus in the ass. Uh, heels heroic or not? Sorry, what was that? Heels. Heroic or not? Well, you guys are thinking way oh, too hard on these. Heels heroic or not? Yeah. I, it, it took me a minute to realize when you were talking about shoes. Really. Uncomfortable. <laughs> a bitch. Okay. Gwen, uh, did she mean I love you to Reese? Yeah. Yes. She. Why wouldn't she? <laughs> you haven't seen the other episodes of Torch, which is fine, which is the, which is what I like about Ashley's well, musical no, very it's just, I think it's, she does. They, they have a great relationship. Yeah. It, it's taken a while to get there, but yeah, I, I agree. Esther, an idiot. No. A little bit. But everyone was an idiot okay. in this episode. Jack making a rookie mistake dropping the gun without securing the area first. Yes, everyone was an this, idiot in this was episode. A huge, it okay. wasn't Jack-like. Okay. Could you run up 33 flights of stairs on a good day? No. No, certainly not with an exploded chest. No, you mean, it, as you audience can see, I am incredibly out of shape. Okay. Rex, heroic or stupid going up those 33 flights of stairs? Both. Both. <laughs> Rex and Jack, is there sexual tension? There's always sexual tension. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to say about this episode of episode four of Torchwood Miracle Day? Yes, I want Torchwood to be smarter. <laughs> yes. I thought it was okay. I don't know. We shall see. Well, we I mean, one thing I'll say, you can't really judge their full intelligence based on one episode since they've been so smart in the others. We can only hope, like I said, we're at the halfway point and Davies, <laughs> he can falter. I hope, I hope he doesn't because I've had a blast. I just hate the number of times that stupidity was used as a plot device in this episode. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. And I think one of the problems is I think Davies falls back on that when he's trying to do action. Oh. Because um, if you watch his Doctor Who stuff, it, it, it happens. You know, st sometimes stupidity will, will come out to propel a story forward when it's not needed. That's disappointing. Yeah, but I'm really hoping, I'm really hoping that we're going to be fine. Fingers crossed. So, um, hey, did you guys have anything else? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Rock on. So this is uh, Gallifrey Pirate Radio uh, signing off for this week.